No sound. Hello? Hello, this is Dr. Liu. Um, in this video, I will explain kinematics parameters in 2D. These involve uh, positions, uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. These are the same exact concepts as in the 1D, but they, they have evolved into 2D. So let's get, let's get started with position. And usually we just use a vector called R. Okay, so this R will have uh, meters in unit. All right, so let's uh, let's do a few different positions. Um, so let's draw this R here. So here we have an R, and this R will have its uh, horizontal and vertical components. Let me grab a ruler, make a better line here. Line here. So this would be the R X component, and itself could also be a vector that just points in the X direction. And this will be the R Y component, or the vector itself that points in the Y direction. Here's the origin X axis, Y axis. Okay. So uh, there's also this angle theta of r. Let's get rid of that harpoon sign and move it down a little. All right. We already know how these are related, right? So r x is r cosine theta. r y is r sine theta. That's how to go from the magnitude, the angle. This amount is r magnitude magnitude angle to uh, x and y components. If you have x and y components to get to magnitude and angle, r can be uh, calculated with the Pythagorean theorem. Right? And uh, theta can be calculated with arctangent ry over rx and also add 180 degrees. If Rx less than zero, right? So we know all that already from uh, from our general studies of the, uh, the vectors and also the uh, reviews of trigonometric uh, functions. So that's position, and the next concept is displacement. So displacement is a change of position. So that will be delta r, also in meters. Now that we have the vector, we can do any direction as a change in position, not exactly just along the original position anymore. So let me uh, let me draw something. Let's uh, let's start with a, an axis. So we'll have the axis here. X. And uh, let's see that. Let's say we're we're here. So then we at a later time we find ourselves to be um, uh, here. All right. So this will be R one. Um, the vector that points to us is is this vector. So this is R one. And later we moved over here. So we're represented by a new position vector, which is this. So this is R2. And uh, to start from R1, go to R2, or displace into R2, we need to move in this direction, right? So let's change the color. So this direction is how much we need to displace ourselves in order to go from R1 to R2. So this is delta R. And um, according to vector addition, the graphical method, tip to tail, see this, this is R1, tip to tail with R delta R. So R1 add with delta R equals R2. So delta R plus R1 equals R2. So that's what displacements mean. Your original position displaced this much gets you the new position. 
right? So you could be doing this. You could be doing some other different different R2. Say your R2 could be over here. The displacement will run across this way. So there's a lot of different ways to displace yourself now that you're in 2D instead of just in 1D going uh, forward or backward as the only two options. Or you can stand still. You still can stand still in, in 2D, right? So this R delta R. It basically points in the direction of change of position so that if you calculate average velocity, this will give you the direction of your average velocity. So let's go with velocity. So this will be the V. And that is, mm, okay, let's get rid of that. Let's define the average velocity, which is the displacement over the change in time. Or you can rewrite it as R2 minus R1, both vectors, then divided by my ruler, T2 minus T1. So the uh, the displacement itself decides which way the velocity points. And this delta T decides how big that velocity is. If you uh, displace the same amount with less time duration, then you have a higher amount of average velocity. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's draw something as a representation of of a velocity. So let's just do something. Um, so we have an uh, an origin here. So we'll draw our axes out. Oops, that only happens in the digital world. I can draw on top of my ruler and make that that line. Okay. So this will be vx direction and vy direction because it's a different vector already. But this corresponds to the same direction of x, right? This corresponds to the same exact direction as the y. So vx is positive when we're traveling in the positive x direction. Vy is positive when we're traveling in the positive y direction. So that's uh, that's by default. So let's draw a vector. Mm. I may as well just use my ruler since I have it in my hand. Okay. So uh, a bit a bit too long. I'll just draw this. Okay, it's a 45 degree angle velocity. And it's just like the other velocity uh, the other quantity that has its component, right? So this is the Vx component, also as a vector in the x direction. This is Vy component. Also, it could be a vector in the y direction with that magnitude. So uh, the uh, the relationships are the same, right? So the vx and the v are related, just like x and uh, the uh, r axis and the uh, the r, right? The r x can also be called x, right? So r x is the same as x, and r y is the same as y. In a lot of different texts, they're written that way. As, as x and y. So vx is this, a component. vy is also a component, v sine theta. And again, if we know vx and vy, how do we get v? Uh, vx squared plus vy squared, square root. And then the angle v makes is tangent inverse, again, y component over x component at 180 if the x component is less than zero. So let's rewrite this rx here. Okay, all right. So the, the reason that I keep repeating myself is to remind you all these quantities, position, velocity, even acceleration, there are vectors. So they follow the same exact uh, rules of how to take get components from the, the vector, how to reconstruct the vector from components. And uh, we use this a lot. For example, if we're projecting a, a ball, with a projectile motion with an initial angled velocity, then how much, how fast does it travel horizontally is this much. If you angle your velocity at this angle, it only gets this much horizontal velocity. And then it gets the rest, this is the vertical velocity. So if you know how fast you're firing a projectile, which is most likely you, you get from your projectile motion lab, and you know the angle you want, uh, you angle your, your projectile launcher, you still want to know how fast it's going in X and how fast it's going in Y. 
you take the the total angle uh, total velocity as an angle and uh, and uh, decompose it into its x and y components and each one of them will be used in uh, in in kinematics to predict how far things are going in the x and things are going in the y and then once your say projectile is about to hit the floor is landing then you'll be able to predict how fast it is in the x and the y separately so if you want to know the total speed as it lands you combine these uh, final velocities together to get the, the final um, magnitude and also you can find out the angle of, of landing if you need those uh, chances are you need them in your uh, in your projectile motion uh, calculations okay so the next concept is acceleration basically is a change of velocity over change in time so let's go with that I don't think I wrote the units here for the velocity, so let's put that in there. So now we have acceleration, also average. It will be meters per second per second. It's defined as change in velocity over change in time, or V2 minus V1 divided by T2 minus T1. Okay. So now we have an interesting situation with acceleration. In the past, if something has an acceleration, it's going to change its velocity. Its, um, its magnitude of velocity will change. Okay, so uh, now uh, because the direction change also constitutes a change, say these two velocities could be the same magnitude. Uh, for example, something is going around a circle uh, with, the same, uh, with a constant speed. You could have the same exact magnitude of velocity but because the direction is changing, then you need an acceleration to make it happen. So let me grab a circle from a different uh, file. I'll just copy paste over here so we can use a circle. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get a circle here. Okay, so now we have a circle. What do we need this for? We can use it to, to demonstrate. Um, okay, let's kind of line it up with our grid. Okay, we can demonstrate what's going on with a circular motion when there is a a, um, a change in, uh, in velocity but not in the, the magnitude of velocity and by the way the acceleration can follow the same exact thing to compose decompose right but uh, but we're not emphasizing that anymore since we've done two already without position of velocity so now our emphasis is focused on this we're trying to understand um, acceleration is required even if velocity doesn't change magnitude. So let's just say that something's going around a circle in this uh, this counterclockwise manner, and at the moment it is here, and it's traveling up the circle, and it has a velocity. So we'll just draw two grids. Here's the velocity v1, and the some moment later it has gone up the uh, uh, the circle over here. So let me just use my ruler to measure how large the grid is on my monitor. Okay, about 1.2. Okay, so let's draw the same exact length at tangent. Actually, no slightly longer than that I, I misread it roughly that long okay so v2 all right so let's assume we're traveling this way uh, the velocity has to point in a tangential direction in order for us to maintain this uh, circular pattern but the direction keeps changing uh, what we don't change is the magnitude. See, the magnitudes are the same. I'll just draw these parallel lines to represent they're the same. So, um, because the velocity changes direction, direction change is a change for a vector. It doesn't have to be direction and magnitude. So, we need a um, an acceleration. Uh, by the way, the position vector, if this is the origin, the position vector is this. So, let's draw out this is x-axis position vector. Here is r1, and uh, we'll have a y-axis pretty soon. And the position vector of the second um, point 
point in time is this way, right? So this is R2, right? So our changing position and changing velocity. So the acceleration is needed because the velocity has changed. So let's bring the two velocities together. See how quickly I can do this with an electronic means. Okay, so let's see. I don't think I enclosed everything I needed. Okay, now I do. So I'll make a copy, place the copy over here. So this is the original velocity. Oh, that's interesting. What happened? Hmm, things kind of stretched out. Okay, so I'll, I'll paste again. That's really interesting. Doesn't look like the one I had. So I'll try my best to copy this again. I'll probably include something irrelevant, but uh, I'll delete those. Oh, that's really strange. See, they get stretched out. Hmm. That's obviously strange. All right. I guess not all programs were created equal. This one's created with some bugs. Okay, so that's V1. I'll be cautious with V2, but I, I guess if the uh, the bug persists, we'll see that also as kind of stretched out. So copy, and I'll paste original. But this one I only was missing an arrow sign, that's the arrow head, that's fine. So I'm trying to put the two velocities at the same exact origin so I can find how to go from one to the next. And I'm going to move that over to this side. I swear I, I was copying all of it. Okay, there we go. So going from uh, from this vector to that vector, how is going to how is the change? The change is this, right? From here to here, just like that. Uh, we're we're here now. We're here. So this is the displacement, and uh, we were this fast in this direction. Now we're traveling this direction. So this quantity is the displacement. This is delta v, right? Since we have a delta v, we have an an acceleration. Uh, so acceleration also is running along delta v. This is parallel to delta v. So this is the direction of acceleration, right? So this is kind of a special uh, result because of 2d or 3d that we can maintain the constant speed along a circle. Um, but we need acceleration to do that because we keep bending the direction of velocity. Thanks.